What is up everyone, this is Too Slow. Today I have the $900 Celica GTS flipped around. Um, if you guys remember, I had it facing that way, but today I have it facing this way because we're gonna tackle the timing chain cover gasket. Yes, this is a very, very common issue with the 2ZZ GE engine where it leaks from the timing chain cover and then you just have a whole mess on the side. Look at all that oil, all the alternator, and just all over the side of the engine. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and prepare the area to, to work on it. I already went ahead and cleaned up my porch. Um, I should probably clean it more from over here, but I mean, I don't think I need that much area. I think this is perfect. This is a perfect work area. Uh, I'm letting the car warm up for a bit. Um, I haven't turned it on in months, um, but I'm just letting it warm up. Um, making sure the battery still holds a charge and that's about it i'm probably not going to work on it like start disassembling it today because one i don't even have the parts yet um they should be coming in the mail by the time i upload this video they will be here in my hands and i'll just cut away and start working on it but for now i'm just gonna raise up the car put it on jack stands and just have remove the wheel and just have everything ready for when the parts arrive i start working on it so I didn't want to use the background audio because it is being butchered tremendously by my mom's birds. <laughs> she has like a cage full of birds and yeah, sorry for that, but hopefully this is a lot better for some of my viewers. Here I am just removing the wheel, removing the splash guard cover, um, putting some engine degreaser, and first step right here is we're gonna remove the cruise control box. It's held down by three 10 millimeter bolts right there. I pointed them all out. And we are gonna move that to the right. You want to unplug the connector for the cruise control and it is held on by, I believe, one clip. And once we remove all that, we are able to move it to the right. And we also want to remove our power steering reservoir. Um, yeah, I checked on it and it doesn't have ATF, which is a big no-no. Clearly says on the cap to use ATF only. And let's get started on this project. Um, this is gonna be a not so fun video. It's more for like how-to purposes. Um, it's just me removing the three 10 millimeter bolts that hold on the cruise control box. And um, I wish I was, I wish I brought my power tools from my job. It would have made removing this a lot easier, but even though I, if I did use my power tool just to remove this, I wouldn't be able to use majority of them throughout the whole job because um, there's barely any any clearance or any space between the frame and the side of the the 2ZZ so here I am removing it um, there's two hooks that hold the the throttle cable um, you want to undo those same to the back where the firewall is at um, you remove those three there's it's probably held on by two spots. I don't know if you guys were able to see that. Those white um, lines, that's where they meet to the firewall. And yeah, we set that aside. Get You want to get the majority of the stuff out of the way. Um, taking off the, the neck for the, I guess the windshield um, fluid, <laughs> whatever you want to call it. Um, just removing some plugs. I think I believe that was for the AC if I'm not mistaken um, Moving some of the wires out of the way you want to get majority of the stuff out and and right here. I'm I put like a, a Pepsi or two liter um, jug that I cut in half so that I'm able to collect majority of the fluid that was in the power steering reservoir I'm not I'm trying not to make a mess here But later on in the video, you'll see that I still ended up making a mess <laughs> Uh, yeah, it's it's pretty hard to not make a mess. 
and yeah that is really 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 dirty um, you do not want your fluid to be this dirty and if it is just take it out and put some new fresh fluid um, here I have my Harbor Freight um, long needle nose pliers at a 90 degree angle makes the removal of the clamp easier for the power steering reservoir it's, they're really really cheap they're like I believe three dollars from Harbor Freight and I've had these for about half a year now and they've done their job successfully see as you can see still made a mess still made a mess but it's whatever um, you don't have to take these off but I ended up taking them off because I want to get majority of the stuff out of the way because this is a really really tight squeeze job um, you barely have any space to do anything and I'm just trying to get majority of the stuff out of the way I believe this hose right here that I just unplugged is for the higher um, power steering line and this is the lower power steering line if I'm not mistaken it's held on by a 12 millimeter bolt um, doing it and yeah you you are gonna leak from here when you pull it out a lot of fluids gonna come out so be ready to catch all that and here I am removing that um, hose remove it don't leave it there it's super easy to get out of the way and when you do get it out of the way you are open to more free space so well, it's not too hard to pull it out it's, it's super easy you do see me struggle a little bit but look at that it's already out. it's really really dirty so it helps that I remove it because I'm gonna go ahead and clean it up anyways um, after I'm done with the job obviously not right now <laughs> Yeah, and it's held on by this little plastic um, hook. You want to push it out and it will come out of place. And here I am loosening one of the ground points because I'm not I'm not taking it off completely from the engine block, but I am going to remove it completely from the body of the car. So here I am struggling to get that 10 millimeter ground, but then I remember you have to remove this 10 millimeter bolt that holds your AC line because this AC line is going to be in the way when you remove your timing chain cover and yeah just go ahead and remove it it will save you headaches from just the space and a trick I learned from an old um an old mechanic of old mechanic friend he said if you don't remember if you have very bad memory just put it back where it was the bolt that way you don't lose stuff and I've done, I've like kept this in the industry and I've had people be like, well, if you can't remember where you, where you got the bolts, you probably shouldn't even work on cars to begin with. <laughs> That's a big lie. That's a big lie. But there you go. I have enough space now to access that 10 millimeter bolt I was talking about. That's on the body. Go ahead and remove that 10 millimeter bolt and just get this ground cable or ground wire out of the way that that's all you have to do you don't have to remove it from the engine block but here i am just fishing it through the breather tube i guess for the valve cover i don't know what that that's called exactly i'm pretty sure it's a breather tube um let's see what else am i doing here oh i'm also removing another um power steering hose um, as I said, you don't have to remove this one. You could get away with just moving it around. But as I said, I want to have as much space as possible. Um, yep, we got it out. And they're really, really dirty. So it's kind of a good thing I took them off because I'm going to clean up everything. Like I'm going to leave everything really nice. This one right here, it's a pain. You need to remove this one. There's no if, ands, or buts. This this line is in the way and I removed the bracket as well the bracket just take it off it'll save future headaches and this this wiring loom for your headlight and your AC you also want to get this out of the way um, what I ended up doing was you can get through the clip through the back it's if you squeeze it through the back it will slip right through and you can get the harness out of the way here it is I already got it out of the way um, 
it, it's it's necessary please just do it and another bracket moving it out of the way uh, and here i am i think i'm gonna remove the serpentine belt now this is my harbor freight um ratchet it's a three eighths it has a swivel head and i'm using a shallow craftsman um, 6.19 millimeter um socket and it, you will not strip any of these tensioners with this setup. This setup is probably the best setup I've used and I've had a lot of success removing um, the serpentine belts from these 2ZZ engines because there's nightmares of people stripping these and breaking these and I've been through that situation and I was just getting tired of using open end wrenches and using the wrong tools. But, so now we're gonna remove the, the clip that holds the harness to the AC compressor and the alternator, the crank sensor, and I forgot what the other one was for, but they're easy to take off. Um, it's just clips, or just you have to squeeze one one end of the tab, and they will slide out. See it sliding out. Um, this gray one in here. Um, it was a little bit tricky, so what I ended up doing was grabbing my needle nose pliers to assist me in removing it. It is a little bit tricky to get to if you don't have like, I guess, smaller hands. I, I have big hands, so <laughs> it doesn't help out. But here I am using the Harbor Freight needle nose pliers. Just go ahead and squeeze the tab, and there you go. Slides right out. Really easy stuff. Removing the alternator um, plug. Mm, I think that's it. Yeah, there you go. Four plugs. Get them all out of the way because you need to remove these anyways. The alternator um, tow volt cap. And this one right here, it's a 10 millimeter nut holding the 12 volt line to the alternator. Um, it is really, really hard if you've never taken it off. So don't fear when you feel like you're going to strip it. That's what I was feeling like, oh man, I'm gonna strip this and I didn't. So it's all good. Um, low for the, to remove the alternator, the lower one is a 14 millimeter. This top bracket is a 12 millimeter. And what else? I believe that the 12 millimeter holding the top portion of the alternator as well. So a 12 and a 14 millimeter we need here. We're removing the 12 millimeter bolt from the upper bracket that bolts onto your intake manifold. Removing the top 12 millimeter bolt from that holds the alternator to your motor mount, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, this job, you gotta remove a lot of things. It's not, as I said, it's not a quick and easy job. You're gonna be on this for majority of the day and if you want to take your time on it take your time on it don't rush it you could break stuff remove the 12 already and now we're gonna go ahead and remove the lower 14 millimeter bolt this one is a little tricky to get to it if your bolt is a little bit oxidized like mine was it's gonna be a little bit hard to remove but at the end of the day i still managed to get it out and as you'll see right now, the bolt is a little bit oxidized. Check that out. See, that's why it was giving me issues removing it, but then your alternator is able to slip right out. Easy stuff, right? As I said, put the bolts back on just so you don't forget where they go. And I'm gonna go ahead and clean up this alternator later on off screen because it is really, really dirty, covered in just oil from this timing chain cover gasket. Ay, ay, ay. Yep. Don't lose those bolts, man. Uh, here I have my Harbor Freight um, ratcheting open end wrench. It is really, really helpful to get that top 12 millimeter long bolt that's holding the AC compressor. Um, you cannot fit a socket in the top one, but you can fit a socket on the lower ones. They're all three of them are 12 millimeters and they're pretty easy to get to. I, I had no trouble getting them all off. Um, just gotta have the right tools. Don't, don't like, don't use the wrong tools, please. <laughs> but here, that Harbor Freight um, open end wrench, the ratcheting one, really, really helpful. Really, really helpful. And 
the bolt will not be able to come out because the AC line is blocking it. But if you pull on the alternator as you're turning the wrench, it should come right out. You can see I'm able to slip it right out. And this is perfect. You need to remove your headlight to set your AC compressor where the headlight usually goes. That way you don't have to evacuate the system. And check this coolant out. I was just shocked at the condition of this coolant. It's, I don't know, it's just brown stuff. It wasn't water, but it was, it looked to me like orange coolant and green coolant mixed. Like this thing was bad. Like it looks nasty and I'm a little worried that it, this is what's running through the 2ZZ right now, but we're gonna do a, a good flush and run Toyota red or Valvoline pink, I guess. <laughs> Since I'm, I actually started to use the Valvoline pink a lot more because the Toyota red is a lot more expensive. It's around $30 the gallon when the Valvoline is only 12 or maybe less a gallon at Walmart. and. It's, it's worked. See, look at this. This is piss orange. <laughs> piss orange and green. You can see the green. So right now, take off your oil filter. Get it out of the way and drain your oil from the 2ZZ since we're already here. Might as well. Yep. Drain the 2ZZ because you don't want fluids going all over the place when you take off the cover for the timing chain. Um, I'm going to go ahead and remove my thermostat housing. It's two 10 millimeter nuts. Um, I did end up ordering a new um, Toyota thermostat. Um, these usually do go bad at higher mileage. And I figured since I'm here, I might as well just replace it. It's only, I believe, $30 from Toyota and it comes with the gasket. And, you know, funny thing, the these are aluminum and the later onesies they're plastic but the earlier onesies they were they were aluminum like this 2zz i found that funny and make sure the peephole when you install the new one is at the top like this one that's how you want to install your thermostat and as i was pulling this out i was like oh crap there's still a lot of coolant in this look at it it's green it's green but orange <laughs> it's like a mix like, I don't know what this person was running in this engine. It's just nasty stuff. Like, oh, crap. <laughs> and, yeah, we're going to get it all out. And finally, it stopped. So, this thermostat was still good. It wasn't failing. But, I, as I said, I'm here. I'm just going to change it. And this is a tricky one, man. You have to, like, hold the pulley and remove those 10 those four 10 millimeter bolts to remove the pulley to be able to access the bolts holding the water the the water pump i was about to say water steering <laughs> but yeah there's there's just a, a couple of 10 millimeter bolts um that hold the pump to the to the timing chain cover and um i was able to reach them all with this um ratchet but actually no i think the back when i used my my smaller ratchet and they're a little the one in the back is a bit tricky to get to but it's it is accessible um through the lower portion of the vehicle it's really simple um and another thing there's two 10 millimeter bolts in the whole collection over i think it's six 10 millimeter bolts two in them um, have threads all the way to the top of the head and four do not have threads all the way to the top I will show you right now once I pull them all out uh, just wait wait we're waiting and here out comes the pump success um, I've never had one of these um, 2ZZ water pumps fail on me so I'm not gonna change it and here it is as I said two of them have threads all the way to the head and or don't but check this out these two right here are the ones with threads all the way to the head that's where they go so remember that do not put them in any other hole or you will crack something or break something from forcing it in and here are the ones with no um, threads all the way to the head that's their locations where they go don't forget that please do not forget that I yeah so if you forget, just put them back like that and just set it inside the car. And 
Now, I probably should have done this a lot sooner, but <laughs> just remove the, if you do have a cover for your um, valve cover, go ahead and remove it. Um, it's a hex head that holds the three or four bolts. I, what is it? Three or four? I think it's four. <laughs> I forgot. But it's a hex head. Um, I don't recall off the top of my head what size it was, but I mean, it's, if you have an Allen key set, you should have the same. You should have the correct size. I'm gonna go ahead and put those back. Don't want to end up losing those. So now you want to go get your your jack to raise up the engine or keep it at a height because we're gonna end up removing the motor mount and. Don't want to put stress on the the mount as we're taking it off so here i am I'm positioning it um you could grab a piece of wood a block a two by four and put it on the oil pan but i mean i've done this plenty of times to know exactly um how where to put it and whatnot to not damage the oil pan but um motor mount is held on by a few um 14 millimeter bolts here i am removing them um um there's three on the black piece of the motor mount and there's four on the oh don't let that happen to you guys the only reason i'm using the extension is because um the bottom ones um you're gonna need to use that long extension and i don't know i was it was early in the morning i was already like not awake and like what am i doing <laughs> but removing those 14 millimeter bolts um super easy if you have a an impact you can do it by hand obviously um, you don't need the impact but figured why not since i have it, it makes the job a lot easier and now we got to get the two bottom 12 14 millimeter nuts they're all 14 millimeter the three on the on the black part of the mount the two bolts on the silver part and the two nuts so with the long extension, I'm, I can easily access the two 14 millimeter nuts from the bottom of the car. Don't even have to crawl under, <laughs> which is a good thing. You don't want to be crawling under a lot. You will in this video, um, in this job. Well, I'll show you later, but here I am. I was missing one of the three for the black part of the motor mount, but I remember that I actually took one out for one of my other cars so i had to go ahead and replace that one go get them from the junkyard and now we want to remove the mount i guess that's on the block itself of the engine and again it's held on by 14 millimeter bolts this one right here is a bit tricky or a bit hard to get off because um the gasket around it is rtv so um usually when you put rtv around it it tends to seep through the threads and it will go through the thread see you can see right there the rtv at the end that's why it makes it a little bit hard to take out but it's it's not too bad it's not too bad here we have three 14 millimeter bolts we also have to remove um i can easily get them off with my harbor freight um half inch ratchet and there they go out it comes super easy stuff nothing hard nothing hard there you go all four 14 millimeter and now we get to raise the engine we have to raise it slowly don't do it super fast um, you want to get it as high as possible without damaging the other motor mounts because this 17 millimeter long bolt needs to come out this is for your belt tensioner um, it will hit the frame if you don't raise the engine so we have to raise the engine with the jack and it is a bit hard to break free here i am struggling a bit it's a bit hard um but there it goes broke free really easy if you have the right tools um you will hit the you will hit the i guess the shock tower where the strut where the strut goes if you keep using the half inch ratchet and socket so i have these harbor freight um open end wrench ratchets i guess you want to call them and see as you can see it, um it still hits it still hits so what we have to do now is take off the 12 millimeter nut on the top right there we have to take that off and i'm also using my harbor freight open end wrench ratchets 12 millimeter and it's pretty easy to get off 
it's pretty easy to get off with um, the open end wrench. It is a 12 point open end wrench with a ratchet. Ratcheting side, I guess. I don't know the proper name to this. I'm sorry if I butcher some of these names, some of these tools names, but very simple and I'm easily able to get the nut out. Really, really simple. But you have to remove this nut to be able to take off the belt tensioner as a whole unit with the 17 millimeter bolt, the very, very long one. And here I am. We have to put this um, power steering line underneath it. And once we do that, we have enough clearance to slide the, the belt tensioner and now it comes. Simple stuff, simple stuff. There it is, very, very dirty, but at least the 19 millimeter um, bolt to take it out is not stripped. Um, here I am removing the the bracket bolt that holds the, what is this, the crank position sensor. It's held on by a 10 millimeter bolt, very tiny. Um, it's just a bracket and it's this black 10 millimeter bolt. You do not want to mix these up with a tiny chain cover 10 millimeter bolts. You will break something if you use a long one or, or a long one where it's not supposed to go. And the 10 millimeter bolt holding the crank position sensor, I'm also removing it right now. It is colored gold. Yep, gold. So don't confuse that. The black one is for the bracket, the gold one is for the actual sensor. Using a stubby um, flathead, I get to pop out the crank position sensor. You don't want to pull on them from the wires. You want to pry it out with something soft, nothing that's going to score it or anything. And oof, it's a little bit dirty. So we're going to set that aside. I'm putting it over one of the radiator um, hoses for the coolant lines, putting it over, setting it aside. Don't want to get it in the way. And what am I removing here? Oh my God, Sebastian, get your arm out of the way. You can't show us anything. I believe I'm removing the 14 millimeter nuts that are held on, that are holding on to the power steering pump on the engine. Yes, yes I am. So you have two 14 millimeter nuts with these long bolts. Um, you can break them free like this. I'm using my Harbor Freight um, 3 8 um, swivel head. And in order to get access to the back, we have to get a ratchet on the back side of this bolt because it's just gonna keep spinning if we just use our 3 8 ratchet. Just, so you have to go to the back. See, as you can see, it's a bolt and a nut. You have to hold the back with a with like a sock with a wrench. Right there, through the back. Really easy stuff. So as you can see right here, you have to hold one end with like a open end wrench and extract the other side with a ratchet and a socket. And you also have to remove this um, pressure sensor wire from the power steering pump. Don't forget that. And I use this Harbor Freight um, pry bar to remove the power steering pump from the engine itself because it's not really easy. It's kind of forced in there because there's these sliding dowels, I guess you can say, from the bolts that hold the power steering pump to the block of the 2ZZ. And you don't have to remove any of the, you don't have to remove the hard line that's attached to the pump. You can just move the pump out of the way. That way you avoid removing this hard line because it is a bit tricky to get off and on. And using my impact 19 millimeter to remove the crank pulley bolt, I'm super easy with the impact. And you can use both hands to pull out the crank pulley. And it's a little bit hard, but it's doable. It's doable. And what's going on right here? I believe I'm going to start removing the valve cover because that's one of the last things you need to take off um, when you're doing this job. Um, I'm just removing the, unplugging the coil packs and removing the 10 millimeter nuts that hold the pressure sending, pressure wire, whatever unit for the power steering pump and the coil pack um, plugs. Just moving that harness out of the way. It's held on by two 10 millimeter nuts. Get that out of the way. And just start taking off the 
what is it? I'm yeah, I'm pointing out which ones um, I'm taking off for the valve cover. They're all held down by 10 millimeter bolts. Super easy stuff. Everyone's done a valve cover gasket job before, so you, this is pretty much self-explanatory. Removing the cold packs from the 2ZZ. Uh, simple stuff. They're held down by 10 millimeter bolts. And I'm gonna remove these two 10 millimeter nuts. I don't know what this is. I think it's a breather tube for the 2ZZ, but ended up removing those two 10 millimeter nuts that are holding that in. And here I am starting to extract the 10 millimeter bolts that are all around the valve cover. And yeah, take your time on this. Um, there are some that are shorter. Um, I believe it's the one for the fuel rail and they're on the side where the where the battery is at there's two um shorter ones i believe one of them's for the fuel rail and the other one's for the i, I forgot what it was but there's two short to it short 10 millimeter bolts and all of them are accessible with the extension and the 10 millimeter um 10 millimeter socket the sh short one but there is one um, towards the back in the middle that you do have to use a swivel a swivel piece to get to but they're all easy to get to they're all easy to get to don't use don't need any special tools um, just I just didn't want to zoom into this um, if, if you've done spark plugs you've done a valve cover gasket like it's that simple I wasn't gonna go too much into detail it's really easy there's just a couple 10 millimeter bolts all around the, the, the valve cover and what else am I looking for? I'm, I guess I'm just double checking right here, making sure everything's um, going fine. And yeah, um, really easy job, really easy job. Um, engine bay is really dirty. I gotta clean that intake, but I also gotta take off that intake and go get it, the bracket welded back on because the bracket did break from the intake. So. That's going to be in another later video. And here I am showing you the swivel piece that I need to get that last 10 millimeter bolt from the 2ZZ because it's kind of tucked into the cowl of the windshield wiper. And with a little bit of force, you can get the valve cover off very easy. It's very simple stuff. And once you pop it up, you want to push it back towards the firewall to clear that breather tube with the two studs from the valve cover and you should be able to pull it right off here it comes and yeah, i'm just inspecting um, 2zz does look a little bit on the sludged up side but it is okay i'm gonna end up cleaning it um for right here for the timing chain cover there's three 12 millimeter bolts that are right next to the power steering pump where it will where the power steering pump would go you want to remove those three 12 millimeter bolts um, you can loosen them and then just reach through the the wheel well and remove them by i guess with your finger it's a lot easier than having to use your ratchet in that tight area but it's doable see it's three 12 millimeter bolts um you can't I mean you can't um confuse those with the other 10 millimeters that are holding on the timing chain cover and here i am removing all the 10 millimeter bolts that are holding the timing chain cover to the 2ZZ engine. And take your time on it. Um, you, all of them can be accessed with just a regular um, ratchet. Here I am using my super old um, Craftsman um, ratchet that I bought from Sears a long time ago for $10. It was a small little socket set. It has 10 all the way to 18 millimeter. And yeah, going through the wheel well to remove the the lower ones, these are a bit tricky to get to, but I ended up getting all them off. Simple stuff. Um, and yeah, don't lose them. Don't mix them. And this is the only one that's different. That's the only one that's different. Do not put that one in any other one or put a long one in this um, hole. See, it's held on with thread lock as well, as you can see. So make sure you clean that up and then put, apply some new thread lock. And also remove your um, timing chain tensioner. It's held down by two 10 millimeter nuts. There you go. And it should come off really easy. And there it goes. It is a little bit worn out. You can see how it's all um, shiny on one end and kind of brown on one side. But 
here's the real test i this is not supposed to be this hard to push back down these are supposed to be actually really easy to push back down but this one was giving me a little bit of issues pushing it back down so this this tensioner is already worn out um i'm gonna i ended up buying a new one for this car anyway so we're gonna go ahead and toss this one i was just trying to see the condition of it but this one's bad I, i'm not reusing it and with all that out of the way you should be able to remove the timing chain cover now um just a little force then you have to use a flathead for this one uh, it did pop off really easy um, but you will have to raise up your engine as you'll see right now in a bit when I'm trying to remove it It's gonna get stuck on the on the strut tower pump, I guess and Here I am putting my jack on the oil pan um, as I said before you could use a 2x4 on the on the jack so that way you don't damage your oil pan, but I know exactly how to do this and I know how to not damage it, but you want to raise it up until you get to the sweet point. It is a little bit high, but once you do get to the high point, the I guess the sweet point, it'll be very easy to slide right out. You'll see right now how, look at that. I did not even struggle to take this out. That was that simple. This thing is dirty, 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 dirty. Just from all the oil just coming out of the gasket. Here I am showing you guys how bad this gasket really was. Like, look at that. Look, watch, it's gonna break. I'm trying to peel it off, but it's just so hard. It's just super hard. Check that out, already broke. This gasket's obviously already dried up. It's not rubbery no more, it's just super hard. It, look at that, I can't even pop the gasket out. It, it, it's ridiculous. <laughs> and here I am trying, trying my best with one hand, and look, it broke again. Once again, it did broke, and here I am trying to remove the the circle part, and I'm just having, I'm just struggling here. <laughs> there you go, broke again. This gasket was leaking a lot. This is just ridiculous how bad it was, and this is just, it's, just, it, it's bad. <laughs> like as I'm peeling it, breaks again. Watch, uh, broke again. <laughs> So this is a very, very common issue with the 2ZZ GE engine. It's, people will say, oh, it's from the, it's the, the O-ring on the timing chain tensioner. It is, but this is your main problem. The tensioner one is not that bad of a leak. It shouldn't be bad where you have a puddle of oil on your floor, but check that out. I think it broke again, did it? Oh no, it came right off. It came off. Here I am removing the inner. Oh no, it did break again. Wow, it broke so much. And here I am trying to remove the last piece that got stuck inside the the circular part. It was just gone. This this gasket's already gone. It's it's trashed. It's trashed. But we're gonna rejuvenate this 2ZZ by installing a new gasket and installing new gaskets. Same with the water pump gasket. That one was. A, that one was okay, but I mean, we're already here, so you might as well just change it out. Same with the outer water pump one. It was still rubbery, but might as well change it. And you got to pop out the crank seal with a flathead and a hammer. I don't have that in hand, so I'll just leave that for another day when I reinstall the gaskets. And there you have it. Timing chain cover is already removed. We have access to everything. Unfortunately, oh, yeah, yeah. One of my lift bolts did break. This one right here. Um... Luckily, not both of them break, so or both of them didn't break, but got one out completely. But the other piece is in there. Um, I've never extracted these before, so I don't know how to do it. I'm going to do a lot of research online and hopefully make a video on how to take out this to install new lift bolts. And from what I know, I'm already there. <laughs> so all I got to do is like slide this this thing out and it should be all good. But that's going to be another video. Um, yeah, as you saw, it's all, it's all off already. It's a good sign. Um, I'm gonna make another video on cleaning stuff up and preparing it to put it back and I will do another install video of putting it back together. So thank you guys for watching.